Hello there. Hope you're doing well. I'm Hardleg Joe, if in you didn't know, and today I'd like to take a few moments of your time to talk about this graph. Because there's actually quite a few lessons we can learn from this one image. Lessons about history, bigotry, the very nature of humanity itself, and also how to properly analyze the data on graphs, which, you know, those, those are all equally important things. So, uh, yeah. If you're not familiar with this particular chart, it shows the percentage of Americans who are left-handed over time. As you can see, it starts around 5% in the late 1800s, dips down to just about 3%, before steadily rising over the next 50 years. Between 1910 and 1960, the percentage of lefties in America quadrupled to about 12% of the total population. At which point, the number suddenly just levels off and we see no more growth. It's an interesting trend to be sure, and if you're the inquisitive type, you might be wondering why. Why did we have such a huge surge of left-handedness in the early 1900s, and why did that growth suddenly stop? Well, the first important thing that we can learn from this chart is how to read between the lines when it comes to graphs like this. Because there's actually some hidden information here that we can extrapolate just from what we already have. Like, think for a moment about how a scientist would even get this data on hand preference. How would they know if someone was left-handed? The government doesn't exactly track that information. It's not on your driver's license or anything. And you can't really tell which hand someone prefers just by looking at them. The answer is, they asked people. These results come from a survey. Because the only way to know for sure what hand people prefer is to have them self-report. So even though this chart implies that it's measuring the actual number of left-handed people, what it's really measuring is how many people are willing to admit that they're left-handed, which is fundamentally different. Now you may be asking, why would someone lie about being left-handed? And we will get to that in a moment, but before we do, I really want to hammer home this lesson about understanding the origins of where data comes from. Because that's going to help you understand a whole bunch of other charts, graphs, and statistics that are much more important than this one. One of the biggest examples is crime statistics. An area's crime rate is often cited as if it's a measurement of how much crime is being committed. But it's not. Think about how we get that data. It's not the number of crimes committed, it's the number of crimes reported, which is not quite the same. And misunderstanding that can lead to some pretty big problems. You see, one of the major uses of crime rate is in determining property values. No one wants to build new houses or businesses in places that they think are dangerous, so areas that have a high crime rate often become very poor. Naturally, cities and towns don't want to be poor, so they try to lower their crime rate as much as possible. Some places have attempted to do this by hiring more police to patrol specific areas, only to find that this actually increases the crime rate. And that's because crime rate is reported crimes, not actual crimes. And having more police on the street actively looking for illegal activity is going to result in more reports getting filed. It doesn't matter if that report prevents a crime from happening, or if the police were mistaken and that report doesn't actually lead to an arrest, simply making the report at all causes the crime rate to rise. So by misunderstanding how statistics are gathered, local governments can often end up creating this perpetual cycle, where instead of raising an area out of poverty, they ensure that it remains in poverty for years to come. Now another example of this can be seen by looking at any statistics that don't account for survivorship bias, which is a concept best explained with this other famous chart. 
This infographic dates back to World War II, and it shows where fighter planes are most likely to be hit by enemy fire. Seeing this chart, some engineers thought they could increase their plane's survivability by reinforcing the most hit areas with extra armor, only to find that doing this had no impact whatsoever. And that's because they didn't consider how the data was gathered. Like, how do we know that these are the most likely spots to be hit? We can't really analyze the planes that got shot down because those tend to explode on impact. So this chart is based on the bullet holes found in planes that made it back to base. The planes that survived. So what this pattern really shows is where planes are most likely to be hit without going down. That's the hidden data there. And what it means is that you don't need to reinforce these areas, because clearly a plane can still survive with holes there. Where you actually need more armor is everywhere else. Those are the places where a single bullet hole was often enough to cause catastrophic failure. This chart and crime statistics both show that how the data on a chart is gathered can sometimes be more important than the data itself, and can dramatically change the way you interpret that data. The same is true when it comes to our original chart on left-handedness. If you think this measures the actual number of lefties, you might assume that something happened in the 1900s to dramatically increase how many left-handed people there were. But if you look into what scientists have learned about hand dominance, that doesn't really seem possible. As far as they can tell, which hand you prefer is mostly a random quirk of brain chemistry. It's not really genetic, you can't breed lefties together and make more of them, nor is it a learned behavior. People are essentially born left or right-handed, and you can't really convert them later in life. Or in other words, there is no way to create more lefties, which makes this chart seem impossible until you learn that it's based on a survey. Once you know that, a much simpler explanation reveals itself. The number didn't increase. 12% of the population was always left-handed. They just didn't want to admit it due to a fear of discrimination. Now, it may seem silly in the current year to imagine serious bigotry against left-handed people, but that was exactly the case for more than a hundred years. Not just here in America, but all over the world. Being left-handed used to be considered unnatural. Many religious groups saw it as a sign of being evil, or at least corrupted. And even academics saw it as an indicator of mental illness or general unintelligence. It didn't matter where you lived, in the early 1900s, writing with your left hand was just considered wrong. In most schools, it was standard practice to force children to only write with their right hand. Talk to your grandparents, and you might hear stories of people being physically punished just for using their left hand. It used to be taken quite seriously. Now, as you might imagine, in a society where you're considered evil or stupid for using your left hand, not many people will admit to being left-handed, even in an anonymous scientific survey. Hell, some people might not even have known that they were left-handed. If they had right-handedness literally beaten into them at a young enough age, and no one else around them ever used their left hand publicly, they might just honestly think that they're a very uncoordinated righty. Now fortunately, as time went on, society as a whole came to realize that left-handedness was just a harmless quirk of personality. These days, most people understand that just because a minority of people are different from the majority, that doesn't mean they're necessarily bad or inferior. They're just different, and that's okay. As society came to accept people using their left hand, and children stopped being punished for it, 
more and more of them were willing to admit their preference. Which is why the number on this chart appears to increase rapidly and then suddenly level out. We didn't gain any more left-handed people. They just came out of the closet, so to speak. We eventually reached a point where being left-handed was more or less normalized, and at that point, every lefty answered the survey honestly. Because there was no longer a reason to hide it or be ashamed about it. So alright, this is a cool bit of history and all, but what does this have to do with the modern day? What can this graph teach us about our current situation? Well, here's another graph showing the number of LGBT people in America over the past 10 years. As you can see, it started around 3% in 2014 and has more than doubled since then to around 7%. Like the left-handedness graph, this is based on a survey. People were asked to self-identify. I mean, how else would you know? So what this really measures is how many people will admit to being lesbian, gay, bi, or trans. Also like the left-handedness graph, you can perhaps see why there'd be an incentive for people to lie about something like that. There's many religious groups that consider LGBT people to be evil, and some academic types even still consider them to be mentally ill. That bigotry has lessened in recent years, as evidenced by the chart, but it's still there. And it's going down, which is why we can expect this percentage to continue rising in the following years. The key here is to understand why it's rising, and where this will inevitably lead. Because some conservatives will use charts like this to insinuate all sorts of incorrect things. Their most common mistake is assuming that people are turning gay. That this chart proves that the number of LGBT people is increasing, because otherwise straight people are being converted somehow. But given what we know about gender and sexuality, that seems about as likely as converting someone into being left-handed. Again, it's mostly a quirk of brain chemistry, something formed at birth or shortly afterwards, seemingly at random. So if you're straight, cis, and right-handed, that was determined before you said your first words, and no amount of social pressure at any point in your life would be able to change that. And the reverse is true as well. So what we're seeing here with the LGBT population is not an increase in numbers, but an increase in awareness and honesty. There's not more gay people now than there were a hundred years ago, it's just that more people are realizing they're gay and they're more willing to admit it openly. Now the other incorrect conclusion that some people draw from this data is that they assume the numbers will continue rising at this rate forever. They'll see that the percentage doubled in 10 years and assume that, well, unless they do something, it'll double again by 2030, and again by 2040, and if it keeps doubling, then by 2060, 112% of the population will be trans. It's... I, I laugh, but that's actually a very common mistake made about a wide variety of charts and statistics. Whether it's human population or the processing power of computers, history is full of people who saw a pattern forming and assumed it was a trend that would continue exponentially, even if that was literally impossible. That's the last lesson that I'd like you to learn from the left-handedness chart. That growth cannot continue forever. No matter what it is, no matter what the circumstance, Things will always plateau eventually. There is always a limit. Population growth has slowed down considerably in the last 50 years. The processing power of computers has hit a wall, with engineers finding that they can't physically make microchips any smaller. When it comes to lefties, the limit seems to be around 12%. That's just how many people are naturally left-handed. When it comes to LGBT people, 
I've heard the estimate as high as 20%. But we won't know for sure until we get there. Maybe it's higher, maybe it's lower, but whatever the case, it's gonna plateau eventually. There's, there's nothing to worry about. If your fear is that straight people will go extinct and there'll be no one left to reproduce, you can rest assured that that won't happen. The majority of people have always been straight and cis, and they always will be. Allowing a minority the freedom to be different doesn't have any negative impact on the world. It just makes things less stressful. It gives people the liberty to live how they want. It makes them free to pursue happiness, whatever that means to them. Personally, as an American, I like those ideals. But that's a topic for another video. For now, I think I'm going to wrap things up here. Hopefully you enjoyed this little examination of charts and graphs, and maybe you learned something. If you did, I'd appreciate if you could share this video around with someone, show it off, help get the channel more traction, so we could do more educational stuff in the future. And if not, well, I hope you at least enjoyed killing some time with me. As always, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them down below, I'll do my best to respond. And if you want more content like this in the future, uh, consider subscribing. Otherwise, thanks again for watching, and until next time... Stay safe out there.